Okay, so I uh, um, started by talking about what the Bishop's Guidelines are for plagiarism, and they're um, posted on the, well, they're in the university calendar, which you can find on the internet, and soon there will also be a handy guide um, of uh, how to handle various tricky problems of citing pro uh, appropriately. Um, obviously the main thing is you're you have to be honest, you have to be straightforward about where you got your information. Um, but beyond that, when do you use quotation marks? What do you have to do to make it clear that the information is um, um, taken from some other source? And um, how do you write a paper while using other people's ideas? Because of course that's what you're supposed to do, is you're supposed to use other people's ideas, but you need to be honest about where they came from. So I went through um, how to do direct quotations. So obviously quotation marks and then you include the citation information which will be author's name, probably the title, um, probably the page number, um, but the format of how you cite something is, changes depending on your field. So you always check with your professor um, about what the, uh, the, the correct formatting style is. The main thing is you're trying to make it possible for someone to verify your source, to check, oh, did the person really say that? I didn't know it. And you check it out, oh yeah, okay. Or maybe, oh, she used it out of context. Um, you need to be able to give people that opportunity. Quotations are, you know, if you're using the direct words of someone else, obviously you use quotation marks, but you actually shouldn't be putting too many quotations in your papers, in an undergraduate paper, especially a short one. It, sound, it, it suggests that you don't have a lot to say yourself. So it is better to use um, other people's ideas by rewording them, absorbing them into your own thought processes, saying it in the way that you would say it, and then at the end of whatever sentence that you've referred to an idea, you make it quite clear that you're talking about the idea of so-and-so, you know, J. Smith, 1989, um, page number, you know, page 23 if, if your, uh, your field requires page numbers. So quotations are good if you are using someone else's words, but in fact you, it's better to reword. Then you get into the tricky um, situation of how close is too close because if you just change a few words, you know, change the mm -hmm. around or, or change the order of a couple of nouns, that's actually not, um, uh, not absorbing the information and making it your own. That's just taking someone else's wording and making a couple of changes. It looks like you're trying to be um, undetectable. It looks like you're trying to take the idea without giving proper um, uh, credit to the original per um, thinker. So try and move away from the words of the original source. Really try and make sure you understand it. Um, so paraphrasing is an art, it's difficult, and in the guide there's a bunch of examples for how to paraphrase fairly. So again the main points are you're trying to be honest, you're trying to make your sources clear, you're, try you're not trying to claim an idea as your own that is not your own. And ultimately the more you cite, the more you give credit to the sources you've used, the more scholarly your paper looks. So it's a win-win situation. A, you're not cheating, which is a good thing, and B, you're actually looking really scholarly and people will respect that. Um, what counts as common knowledge, because everyone knows if it's common knowledge you don't have to give a, a citation, well that's a tricky one. Um, sometimes people say if it's in an encyclopedia it's common knowledge. Well that's not true, because some encyclopedias are um, very scholarly, written by the top scholars in the field, and they might not be stating just what everyone knows. They're in fact stating someone's um, very well thought out idea and you have to give credit to that person. Um, another way of deciding whether something's common knowledge is if you've seen it in 10 different sources. Well, yes, it probably is common knowledge if you see that same piece of information given in 10 different sources. Um, but, you know, it's hard to know for certain. Just always ask your professor if you're not sure. And you can cite. Uh, you're never going to get into trouble for citing too often. The most that will happen is that your professor might laugh a little bit at you for citing every sentence um, and perhaps suggest that you work a bit more closely with um, with him or her next time to avoid, you know, to figure out when to cite and when not to cite, but you would not be in trouble, whereas not citing when you should cite 
is what could result in some pretty stiff penalties. Um, zero in the assignment, zero for the course, even if if, if it's a really severe um, case of plagiarism or if it's a repeat, then it's not just zero for the assignment, but zero for the whole course. All your other work, even if you didn't cheat in it, is out of the window. Um, or even worse, if it's, if it's serious and probably a repeat offense, you can get suspended from the university. So um, you don't want that to happen because you didn't know what you were up to. Um, that kind of penalty should be reserved for really dishonest people who deserve to be kicked out of the university. You don't want it to happen because you just didn't know how to do it right. So the guide hopefully helps you avoid that. Uh, quick and dirty guide to citing your sources, which um, is just a, a few um, suggestions for how you can teach yourself to um, give proper credit to the sources you're using. First example was to avoid the passive voice, which you probably heard you're supposed to avoid if possible but maybe didn't know why. There are a bunch of reasons for it. One is stylistically it um, isn't usually considered as, as elegant as the active voice. I should backtrack, a lot of people don't know what the difference is between active and the active and passive voice. Um, so uh, you have to kind of work that out. The active voice is when um, the subject of the verb, I, throw my paper onto the ground, that's active because I am the subject and I'm doing the throwing. Whereas the passive voice would be the paper is thrown to the ground. So then the paper is the subject, but it's the recipient of the action. So that's the passive voice. Um, why do I suggest you avoid the passive voice? Because, if you note the sentence where I said the paper was thrown to the ground, who did the throwing? I don't have to say. In a passive voice statement, there's no need to state the agent. So it, if you use the passive voice, you might find yourself slipping into careless habits of not stating who your source was, who said this, who thought this. So, um, for example, um, I gave this silly example, um, it has often been assumed that mice like cheese, well, who assumed it? I'm using the passive voice and it kind of allows me to get away without saying who did the assumption, who made the assumption. Um, if I turn it into the active voice, I have to come up with some person who did it. So, many scholars following the work of Miller in 1967 have assumed that mice like cheese. So by turning it into the active voice, I have to say who did it and who thought it. So it's just a little trick to try and, and remember to cite your sources. I asked the question, is Wikipedia evil? And my answer is not at all. It is an incredibly useful resource, but I admit that some people, some professors are prejudiced against Wikipedia. So you do have to be careful and try and do what your professor wants. But when I say Wikipedia is not evil, what I mean is that it's as good as any encyclopedia can be in that it sometimes has incredibly useful bits of information, but it can have inaccuracies or a particular article might have been written by someone who doesn't know a whole lot about the subject. Um, you have to use it as a starting point to direct your energies um, towards other resources, give you a sense of what the, the state of the question is, for instance. One of the things that makes some Wikipedia articles really good is that they have citations, they have links to articles, to scholarly articles that are, um, you know, considered good, peer-reviewed, they have footnotes, they have, they're really well done. Uh, Wikipedia can direct you to them, therefore it's a great place to start. But you have to know what it is and not um, assume that uh, Wikipedia is going to tell you all the answers. In fact, it, it definitely won't. So my rule would be, it's perfectly fine to use Wikipedia, and if you make a lot of use of Wikipedia, you should be you know, careful to cite it, but if that's your only source, that's a sign that you're not doing scholarly work. So then that led to the next point, which is um, question authority, even if it's not Wikipedia, if it's any source, even if it's a peer-reviewed source written by, um, a peer-reviewed article written by the best scholar in the field, Sometimes the best scholar in the field makes some really stupid mistakes and um, you should question it. You should not assume that um, everything you read must be true. Ask, um, ask yourself how you know a particular fact. 
Sometimes you know it because you've heard it all your life, but sometimes you know it because you heard it in, say, a lecture, or you heard it, you read it in a book recently. Try and track that down. Um, if you did hear it in a lecture, should you cite that lecture? Yes. Um, you should just cite by the, the, the date of the lecture and the class for which the lecture was given. Um, if you have the time, you might want to check with your professor to see if um, he or she was referring to another source. So that interesting point you want to cite, perhaps the professor can say, oh yeah, that's the work of um, you know, Jane Doe 2003, I can give you the article. And then you, you're, that, that's far better than just citing the lecture. But um, certainly the default is you, you make it clear where you got the information from.